everyone welcome back to another video in today's video i will be talking about my lupus and sjogren's blood work every once in a while i get a full blood work done by my rheumatologist and i just went in for that last week so i do have the results and i do want to share them with you the reason i share them with you is because i know that it can be scary looking at blood work uh, sometimes you don't know what you're looking at and then also just overwhelming seeing so many red and negative markers or positive. So first up, of course, you can see that my ANA is positive. I do indeed have lupus. I'm not lying to you all. Um, so a positive ANA is usually required when you are diagnosed with lupus. I did do a video recently on, uh, I'll add a card up on the video of diagnosing lupus so if you're interested in watching that that'll have more information on the tests for diagnosing lupus just a reminder i'm not a doctor or a medical professional i am just simply sharing my experience if you need a more in-depth explanation i would recommend checking with your doctor or looking on sources like john hopkins has great information on lupus so moving along, we also have the complements. So the complement proteins are just going to be indicating whether or not you are having inflammation within your body currently. This was great to see. Mine are not. They're looking good and beautiful. I love to see that green. And then for the uh, DNA DS antibody, mine is obviously it's showing negative. It's not present. Uh, this is another test that is used for lupus uh, and many times it can indicate that you have kidney involvement if you have a positive uh, DNA DS antibody. I'm not as sure about the ribosomal P but I do know that this is another test used to look for lupus. SM antibody is another test for lupus. Editing Samantha here. I just want to make a quick note because I mixed this test up with the next one and I just want to say that this one is specifically for lupus and it is found in about 20% of those with lupus and I believe it said less than 1% of those with any other rheumatic diseases. The same goes for the SMRNP antibody. I might have actually switched those. I think this one is more important for mixed connective tissue. Sjogren's antibody, so obviously, as you can see, my SSA is positive. Unfortunately, this one is the one that if you do have children, uh, you give. there's a chance that they can get neonatal uh, lupus. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're working with your rheumatologist and your gynecologist OBGYN as you're going through the process if you do plan on getting pregnant. Then for me, my SSB is not positive, so I only have one of those antibodies that are positive. And as you can see, there are a lot of other uh, antibody tests that were done for me, but none of the rest were positive, so we did the thyroid. Um, I have no idea what this one is, the SCL70, but I'm not worried about it because it's not positive for me. Uh, I would recommend looking that up if it is for you. Uh, and then rheumatoid factor. This one has been uh, red in the past for me. This is just another indicator of inflammation within the body. And yes, it does not mean that you have rheumatoid arthritis specifically, but if you do have rheumatoid, obviously this one's going to show up for you as well. I'm interested in the comments below. What are your main indicators that you are flaring? For me, it's rheumatoid factor, the complements, and then the sed rate. Then we have some more detailed information about the ANA, uh, whether it's speckled. Um, this is actually my first time seeing on the bottom there, you can see cytoplasmic. Uh, I, I, I tried to look it up. It just, I know it's just different cell shapes. Um, not sure exactly what that means. If anyone does know what that means, please let me know in the comments below. Then we have some more red coming up. <laughs> Unfortunately, my C-reactive protein was a bit higher this time. Um, usually that can indicate inflammation or autoimmune disease as well. Um, but for me in this case, my guess since my other inflammatory markers are normal, is that because I have a sinus infection right now, this is up. So C-reactive protein can also indicate infection within your body. 
Um, and I do have a pretty bad sinus infection right now. So yeah, that's what's probably what's going on. Then my creatine, I hope, I, I don't know if I'm, I think I'm saying the um, protein version of it, but the creatine, maybe that is, I don't know, probably saying it wrong. Uh, so for this one, I am a bit low, which is not so worrisome. Um, I figure it's because I do have I'm not getting a whole bunch of protein because I do have a vegan diet. So because I'm not eating as much protein, uh, this is a little lower on me. Maybe it has to do with being on prednisone. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but I know it has been low before. My doctor was not worried about it. If your creatine, creatine is high, this is this can indicate that your having protein in your urine at high levels and it can indicate kidney disease. So you will want to watch out for that. Really that is all. The rest of it was pretty dang good. All of my blood work for my hemoglobin and my red blood cells were great. I'm very happy about that. Uh, it's not showing that I'm hemolyzing anymore. So that is just, it makes me feel good. And then of course my sed rate, uh, very happy to see that my sed rate is low. It hasn't been like that for a while so I'm happy about that. Well that is all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my blood work and seeing where I'm at currently. Blood work can have a lot of red in it but I promise you're doing okay. You're doing the best you can and just try to keep up with your medication treatment plan whatever it is uh, and continue to see your doctor. If you like this video don't forget to give it a like and if you're not subscribed already subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. Bye!